Hey, get inspired, everybody. We are so grateful for you tuning in. Thanks for watching another episode of Life Inspired. We're so excited to have as our guest on the red couch today, Miss Abby Yoder. So yay, thanks for coming, Abby. Thank you, Diane. We're so grateful to have you. I'm so thankful to be here. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna tell the audience just a little bit about what um, Life Inspired is. If you've never tuned in before, we're gonna do three questions basically for Abby. Um, she's gonna talk about a turning point that kind of got her inspired and so first of all life was going along and then there's this dot 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 moment and then now you're walking an inspired life so Abby what is your life before the dot 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 turning point moment and tell us a little bit about Abby well I grew up right here in South Bend Indiana my dad is uh, has been working at Granger Christian School Grace Church oh, for cool. 40 years. Wow, did not know that. Okay. And uh, he's he's taught many students in this area, so a lot Very of people cool. know about him. And I always had a heart for the Lord, especially growing up in a Christian family, but I was not aware of what was really in the world, in the current situation in the world okay. until 2014, and that was when my dot, dot, dot moment okay, happened. Okay, so now the second question, what is that? What's your turning point? So I was um, in a room for the cross conference simulcast, and okay. David Platt spoke, okay. and he said, if every Christian in the world told every single person they knew about Jesus, and all of them believed in Jesus, there would still be two billion people who had never heard and would never accept Jesus because they had no way of hearing. Wow. And that's the current situation. Wow. Crazy. Okay. So, so what did that do inside of you? How did that turn you in, into a new inspired way? So he asked anyone who wanted to give their lives to going where people had no way of hearing about Jesus to stand. And I did. Ooh. And people prayed for me and I wow. knew something big just happened. <laughs> wow, okay, so then what did you do? So I started on this trajectory of going to the nations, going somewhere where people had never met a Christian, had no way of hearing. They were just without this Bible. And you know, this is my most precious possession. I'm so thankful that God wrote a book for us. Right, And His love letter. It is. And there are two billion people who have never seen this. They have no word of scripture in their language. They have no way, they'll never hear about Jesus from the time they're born till the time they, they die. Right. Unless we go. Unless we go. And who, how, will they, how will they hear unless someone tells them and how will someone tell them unless they're sent? I, mm -hmm. I don't remember the specific Exactly. reference but yeah so we got to send and you're one that we send so tell us about I mean because you've been in Peru and what are some of the other missions that you've been on yes so I was in China for two and a half years teaching wow. English and wow. absolutely loved it the the believers in China are so precious yeah. they're so so precious and they have to hide their beliefs right they can't be public that they are Christ followers is that true Right, they have to. They have to be careful, but they're a lot more bold than you'd think that they would be. Really, they're they're pretty fearless. The people That's that great. I knew. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And where was your next trip? And then I was, well, I traveled a lot around Southeast Asia while I was there, so I was able to see believers in the Philippines and Malaysia and Indonesia and Cambodia and Thailand and okay. Singapore. Taiwan, yes, right? Japan, <laughs> right? And that's the thing is the beauty of this body of Christ is that it is what each culture thrives with. It's not this Western thing. It's a global story and a global body, brothers and sisters that are so united right. because we have Christ as our head. And it's right. gorgeous. It's right. just gorgeous. And I think that's what the heart of the Father is, that he has this tapestry of diversity of people from all different tribes and tongues and languages, nations, who will one day be worshiping around the throne of God. Right, right. Yeah, he, he created us all. It's like, you know, there's not just one kind of flower. There's not just a rose. Right. You know, there's all beautiful flowers and there's not just flowers, there's bushes and trees and, you know, he, he does love diversity. That's so cool. Okay, so we always like to ask our guests um, because just like we have a different retinal scan or a different thumbprint, 
you connect with God differently. So how do you stay inspired on a daily basis, Abby? What what keeps you um, connected to the Holy Spirit and, and feeling Him live through you instead of Abby living your life? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what do you do? How do you stay That's connected? That's a great question. And it's, you know, it's morphed throughout the years. I'm really thankful the Lord really impressed on me the importance of just having time with him. Okay. Time with Jesus, me and, and what Jesus. Does that look like? Um and so, yes, from the time I was 13, I started having daily time with Jesus. And a lot of it includes worship and singing. I think that okay. the Father talks a lot in the Bible about singing, and he wants joyful worshipers. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want mm-hmm sad, oh right, no, right, we have right. to do that. You know, he right. wants us to be joyful worshipers. So I do a lot of turning on my worship music and dancing and awesome. reading the word, listening to the word on the audio Bible, just being still before him. Mm-hmm. I think for me, I'm a very go, go, go kind of girl. And I just need time quiet before the Lord and just staring at the trees and nature and reminding myself that this God who made all this lives inside of me and is intimately connected with me, that he loves me, that I am the beloved. I need time with him, that my identity is not what other people think of me or say about me or what I do or what I have. Right. Because all of that changes right. a lot. Right. But my rock and my stability is that I am the beloved. Right, right. And right. the Father right. looks at me and sings over me. Yeah. He rejoices over me. He made me in a very unique, specific way, as He did for each person. Right. And He's given us a way that we can thrive and be fully alive. Yeah. And that's what I'm learning is that he wants us to be fully alive, fully ourselves. It's about discovering who he's made us to be. Right. And each person has something very unique, like that fingerprint you talked about, that only they can do. Right. And it's really amazing that when they are living in their purpose, living fully in who they are and their giftings and what they've been made to do, that they come alive, right? They're the most filled for sure. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. So what would you say to um, someone that would be watching that um, maybe doesn't really appreciate what God made of them? They don't mm. like, I don't like this nose or mm-hmm. I don't like, you know, the you know, that I have the habit of doing this. What would mm-hmm. you, how would you encourage someone like that um, that's not kind of like really happy with God about that? And so they don't really mm-hmm. rejoice in that. What, how would you encourage mm-hmm. someone like that? What would you say? Mm. Well, I would say that I've been there. Mm, okay. It took me until just a few years ago that I could say, as that verse David said, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. A lot of people don't understand my unique personality. I'm very emotional, very passionate, very sensitive. And I always thought God made a mistake when he made me. Did you? I did. Why? Because I thought, well, if the church can't accept me like this, the pastors and the leaders, they say, you're too much. You need to calm down. You need to be quiet. You need to not be so vivacious. Then God, why did you make me? Because I want to love you and I want to serve you and I want to please you. And so I had to separate what God said about me, what other people said about me. And so I think that's a step too, is being able to not listen to what all the other voices are. Because a lot of times the reason we're down on ourselves is because we're listening to voices right. that are not right. the truth. Well, and I think that sometimes they come from the world. Yes. But I think sometimes they just come from the enemy. Yes. And it sounds yes. like it's within. Yes. You know, and so Mm -hmm. I do think, yeah, we definitely hear a bunch of lies. The devil's Mm -hmm. a liar. I love Mm -hmm. that song, Fear, He is a Liar. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll take your whatever, and I don't remember the words of the song, but yeah, crazy, Mm -hmm. crazy. Okay, so now we also have a lot of viewers that are prayer warriors and would love to pray for you and for your ministry. We have some that might even have the capacity for um, contributing or maybe not the capacity financially to contribute, but maybe time to donate volunteer Mm -hmm. time in Mm -hmm. in what you're doing. So can you share just a little bit about what it is that you're doing that, um, that they can help with in any of those three ways, praying for you, volunteering with you or contributing to the cause? Yeah. Tell us about 
about that. Asking. Yep. So I love the verse where it says, Jesus says, pray earnestly that the Lord of the harvest would send forth labors into his harvest field. And he looked at the harvest field and he said, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. And I am praying that God will do a mighty work through this area in the world that he would send forth passionate lovers of Jesus to go to the ends of the earth. Cool. Okay. And so that's one thing is so just a prayer. praying okay. that God will do this, do his work. Um, I think I'm also really involved in Perspectives, and Perspectives is a course that's in 250 cities around the world, oh, wow. and I'm coordinating it oh. this fall in South Bend. Wow! It's meeting at Gospel City Church every Thursday night, okay. and it's closed for this um, time, but I'm praying that this is a course that will continue in this area. Okay. So people so can check it out. Called perspectives. perspectives. Okay. Totally shifting your perspective of the world, of what God's doing, of yourself, finding okay. your purpose in your plan in where God has Very set cool. you. Okay. So perspectives.org, there's a one minute video. You can check it out. Okay. Okay. And then any ways that people can volunteer? I am always looking for just people to also share share in the vision of what God is doing coming to prayer meetings okay. I'm in I'm very much in a transition period right now okay. and I don't know where God is going to send me next Okay cool and I love just to hear from people okay. I have a newsletter that I send out once a month with okay. pictures and prayer requests. And I love to cool. just connect with people and to hear their stories of what God is doing in their heart, awesome. how he is leading them Very cool. because he's working. He right. is working. God is right. on the move. Oh, for sure. Right. Absolutely. He's and doing it's, crazy it's encouraging. Stuff. Yeah, it is. It's mm -hmm. so fun. We just need to open our eyes and just see what he's yes. doing. So thank you guys so much for watching. Abby, thank you for being here. Um, she is in town for a while. So if you um, would like to connect with Abby, have a little coffee. I know she would be happy to meet with you, connect with you. Um, if you want to get on her newsletter list, um, you can just message us here. And as always, you can watch Life Inspired on either YouTube or Facebook or the Inspired Homes channel. Um, the inspiredhomes.com website. So yeah, so you can share this story with somebody that needs to hear um, why they matter to God. And even mm -hmm. if they don't really love what um, they're seeing in themselves right now, maybe you want to share this with them so they can mm -hmm. go, oh yeah, no, I want to be like Abby and learn how to have mm -hmm. time alone with God. So I hear that I'm fearfully and wonderfully mm -hmm. made. So thanks again. Thank I really, so really much. appreciate it. You guys have a great week. Thanks for watching.